What's up everybody, Tim back here at Higgs Garage and here we have a little mini Jeep as you can see. I'm really excited to make this video to show you guys this toy that we got for the family, mostly little Tim and I, and how much we've enjoyed it, the things that we've had wrong with it over the past couple weeks, ownership with it, what we needed to do, what we've done with it, the capabilities that we put it through, and overall if we think it was worth it or not. Stay tuned, sit back, and enjoy the video. We got this little Massimo mini Jeep, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, and I've been kicking around the idea. I've kind of wanted one. I thought they were really cool. I've read a lot of mixed things about them, though. Um, I know they're Chinese, so they're already going to have all those issues that the knockoff stuff has. Um, one of the main things is nothing's tight, so loose bolts, rattles, stuff like that. Decided to go ahead and shoot, go for it, right? We really liked it. When we seen them, they looked like they were... I mean, pretty well put together for what they were. Uh, this one, we'll go over the price here in just a little bit. We did get, a, I think, a pretty good deal on this one. This one was brand new from our, uh, sort of local to us. It was out in, towards St. Louis, uh, Missouri. And I think that they had them listed for $24.99. We went ahead, got it. It looked really cool. Um, there was two. And they're both sitting on the showroom floor. When we went, we decided to pick... The other of the two, not this one, they were both red. Um, however, this one had a couple more scuffs and scratches on it. And so we went with the other one. We couldn't get the other one to start. This one did start up. We, I had to tune the carburetor a little bit or just, just adjust it really. to idle when we were there at the store but thought no big deal we wanted to get it though and didn't really want to have another project just wanted something to be able to put around play around let little Tim drive um, kind of you know help him with some driving skills on a small scale he does have the go-kart but we figured this would be better for him as he gets a little older we decided to go for it and even though the other one didn't start and this one needs adjustments, we weren't off to a good start. However, let me flip you guys. We went ahead and got it home. And first things first, we went and got on some Facebook groups. A gentleman on one of the Facebook groups told us, make sure that we check down here, this case and this chain. So right here to make sure that this chain isn't scooted over and eating on this case. He said that we needed to be sure that we stayed on the lookout for that because he had one ruin one of the engines that he had and wanted to warn us. The next morning, so we, we got it late at night, we drove it around the yard just a little bit. Ready? But the next morning I went out and sure enough, it was eating the case. A uh, little retainer that holds that sprocket onto that little crankshaft, drive shaft, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> and that retainer was all smashed and deformed. I had initially thought maybe that was done from somebody not installing it correctly, right? I went ahead, got another one, put it on. I thought it was good. Maybe 15, 20 minutes. I noticed the chain was already over again. Took the cover off. Sure enough, it was bent again. I thought, what am I going to do to be... Do we return this? Do we just kind of cut our losses and get away from it? Because I didn't want to modify it. I didn't want to void the warranty. I didn't want another little project. But Tim really liked it, little Tim and me. So we decided to go ahead and let's see what we can do to fix it. What the idea I had was we got two washers, large washers, and we put them on the back side. You look right there, you can see two washers. So those two washers are on the case side of the sprocket. And then there's a sprocket next. And then there's the retainer that holds it. That's what I did to help fix that. So I put the retainer on, then I put another washer on the outside of that. I drilled two holes that match the retainer and I sandwiched everything together, if that makes any sense. I haven't had any problems so far. We've been driving this thing and for weeks now, 
and haven't had any problems. The only thing that I keep thinking that might cause an issue is I don't know how those washers that are against that case are gonna hold up to, or the case is gonna hold up to, the shaft spinning through there. I haven't had any issues. It seems to be working. Uh, you try it a ton, it's on your own. Uh, no responsibilities for what you try on there. I don't know, it seems to be working on ours though, if you have that problem. So that was our sprocket issue we had. Then I wanted to go ahead and do a couple upgrades. Let's see, after also looking on the groups, we did uh, the Nibby 22 carburetor and the Nibby intake with it. I didn't have any problems putting this on. It was really super easy. The only thing I did have to add was right here, this nut, because the other the bolts threaded right into the other carburetor, not on this one. Uh, so I know some people have to take this little 90 degree elbow off the old carburetor to fit on here for the closing the hood and stuff. This all closes and works fine without me doing that. So this was a complete just bolt on, you know, add two nuts and it was good to go. Um, I didn't change any of the jets or do anything like that. Uh, there's an adjustment screw on the back for your idle and the, the choke is the only other thing that changes. It's right here. It did used to have a cable that ran up and you had a, a choke lever or cable right up here you could access from the driver's seat. No longer can we do that. Although this Jeep has been starting with no choke, so I haven't really needed to use it. Well, I think there's been like two times that I've needed to open the hood and actually manually choke it. Hasn't been an issue for me. We did that. Then we also added an oil cooler, which was a super simple install. We took this front grill off, and then we took our bracket here, put it up on the outside, that way we could drill our, I marked it and then I drilled our holes, mounted it on the inside, and then ran all of our lines right over to this adapter plate, right there, that the kit comes, and that is our oil cooler. So now we have an oil cooler on here to help the, the engine stay cool, we have the carburetor upgraded, and let's go up to the driver's seat. We did a couple things. It did have a different speedometer in it. One that was in kilometers an hour. This one is like obviously miles per hour. We added, it is GPS. So what I did is I just drilled a small hole, put a rubber grommet and ran the GPS right here. I used double-sided tape. You can see our addition of our ducks. Uh, Timmy's grandma, my mom has a Jeep and she decided to get Timmy some ducks. They're on here with just double-sided tape as well seem to be holding up just fine along with our GPS signal for our speedometer. Speedometer is nice. I wired it <clears throat> right up to one of the plugs for the original one had a hot uh, with a key on. So as soon as we turn the key on, I just wired it right to there and it all comes on. And then it also is backlit, which I turned, I wired with our headlights. Headlights kick on, the speedometer lights up and you can change to several different colors. Just you reach around the backside back down underneath here and you can change it with the buttons on there we leave it on green and that's how that works gear indicator it was mounted on top so imagine these bolts taken out and then this whole indicator was mounted on top of this dashboard i thought that looked kind of tacky so what i did was i unplugged it unscrewed it put it on the back side ran the screws that way it kind of was more flush it's not exactly flush there's still a little bit of a lip here but it looks much better the way it was mounted like this we twisted these around here or this switch on and off switch it was toggled left and right for your headlights this one is your headlights this one is your blinkers i flipped it to where it was up and down for on and off for the headlights just so it was easier to decipher on which one was headlights and which ones were blinkers now yes you can see how the switches are different you know on and off and this one is on and on just to make things easier i did that i like that we added this little tack. I will leave the, the links in the description for all of the stuff that we used, such as the speedometer, the oil cooler, and this little tack here. I drilled a small hole, put a rubber grommet in there, ran our wires, plugged it in. This has a clock. It'll tell us our RPMs. It tells us our engine temperature. It tells our total engine hours. It has engine temp, I don't know, limit, I guess you could say, to where this will flash red. The whole screen will light up red whenever 
engine temp reaches a temperature that is hotter than what you set it or your RPMs exceed what you have set it for your max RPMs. So that's kind of nice. It does backlight green. You can see here. And, and then you can also have the light turn on all the time. Or I have it on auto, so like whenever you touch a button, I guess only certain buttons, but it'll it'll uh, light up. That's really nice. So it can be on, off, or auto. Our choke, it was here. I put a rubber plug in. Same with our mirrors. It came with some mirrors. They were kind of junky. I uh, didn't think we were going to really use those mirrors, so I went ahead and took those off. Thought it looked a little bit better. It was one less thing that would rattle. Now, the seat on this thing, actually everything on it, you're going to need to go over with a fine tooth comb as far as your bolts. Our seat down in here, these bolts were all loose. Everything was loose. Our seat belt bolts were all loose. Everything was loose. Everything had to be tightened. Now, the floorboard also had a lot of noise. This is just a plastic floor pan. So all these are tight. I don't know if, you can, if the camera will pick it up, but you can see how when we tightened it, it kind of indented it. That's just waiting to crack. So what I'm going to end up doing is make a template or take this out, I'm not really sure, but I'm gonna make a metal like floor mat almost, basically, that's gonna sit inside here and I'll drill the holes to match all these holes. <clears throat> and then we will Raptor liner them and we'll put the floor mat in here or the metal floor pan in on top of this and then bolt it. So there'll be plastic and then metal on top and then that we can tighten down very well and it will hold up a lot better. We won't have to worry about cra cracking or breaking or anything like that. And I may even do one on the bottom because I did have a worry about these tires throwing up when we were in the woods yesterday, some sticks and it having it break through the floor. We might put metal skid plate on the bottom to protect that and then also on the top. When we do that, the idea is we're gonna go ahead and weld a, another little piece that kind of wraps around here and it will keep debris. You can see all the dead grass from when we mow and then we ride, they fly right in through the wheel well. So I'm gonna build something to hopefully help keep that out and keep little kids' feet or fingers or whatever from going the chain or the tire. So I will be doing that. It does have a gas can. I do not know if you're supposed to use them. It seems like you could. Um, I don't know if it leaks. I've never put anything in it yet. I don't know if we will. Or if we'll just find a gas can that will also fit in this little rack that is mounted on there, like a plastic one or whatever. The spare tire was also loose. And see those little orange plugs those are those carrier bearings for this axle they were not greased so I did need to grease those checking all your tires for being tight uh, ours were tight but not extremely tight so I would recommend tightening them up our shocks you got two in the rear two in the front I did get a spanner wrench also from Amazon I'll leave the link in the description and I put them on the max stiffness because I'm larger and whenever I'm in there with the kids and stuff like that I didn't want the springs bottoming out the way I did I wanted to jump back real quick guys the way that I did our temperature sensor for for our that that tack that I showed you this is the tack right around the spark plug wire so that's how it catches our rpms but if you look down here this black wire it has a loop on it and it kind of was hard to tighten but I tighten it right on that oil cooler line so that the temperature is reading right off that oil cooler. That is all the little upgrades and things that we did to our little mini Jeep. I don't think I went over. This is three speed with reverse. Down would be, I might rock it just a little. There's one, two, and three. And then we go back up neutral and reverse so that is very nice it does have a parking brake if, if you just saw me deactivate it just up is the brake and down that is the way the transmission works in it for the carburetor I did not tell you guys that the cable length is too long or it was for for me on this one so it is the original cable however I had to max out our adjustments here and here and then if you see the tab that this is on that tab was more off at a 90 from this 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 part that it's welded i just took a 
uh, pry bar and I bent, because it still had too much slack, I just bent it away from the pedal. Now it works great. That's how we fixed the throttle cable length issue. I was not very happy with the decals on this thing. They had the plastic tape still on the outside of the decals, peeling them off. The plastic tape, no matter how gentle I was, was peeling off stickers. They were, it was folded over, they were bubbling. This one looks terrible. They're super sticky on the outside. So that sucks. We're gonna go ahead and remove those stickers and probably get some of our logos and stuff like that and badge this thing up appropriately. We did also take the windshield all the way out, all these bolts, and we put rubber grommets on both sides of the, the windshield here. So like on between the windshield and this metal tab on this side and then also on the head of the bolt. So there's rubber sandwiching on both sides. Don't know if it helped, don't know what it did, uh, really. I think it silenced it up a little bit. It still makes a little bit of noise, but it is a little bit better. Let's go ahead, it's in neutral. Gotta give it a little bit of throttle. Fires right up. Super easy. So let's go ahead and take this thing for a spin. So we have our parking brake disengaged. We will shift, there is no clutch. We're in first gear. To shift, you'll just let off the throttle, shift it, and continue on the throttle. And that, everybody, is our Massimo little Chinese mini Jeep. I think that it's great. Uh, we haven't had any major issues with it. It's driven us all around just fine. I can fit Timmy, uh, our daughter Nayeli, all three of us can get in. They do have seatbelts. I don't know if I really recommend the seatbelts though. It's pretty stiff and the steering is not, it doesn't turn super sharp. And the reason I, th I would assume is a because it has a solid axle in the rear so it kind of pushes that front end but also it's probably maybe even set up that way possibly for the potential to roll it maybe they made it to where it's less likely to roll that's why the steering is not so sharp but that is another kind of gripe about it but i can I, I, at least i can go ahead and let timmy drive it and i don't have a fear for him rolling it over now if you were buckled into the thing and it was rolling over there's no way to really bail so yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if the seatbelts are a good thing or not. Um, it's kind of probably something that you're gonna have to figure out on your own. I, I don't know if I trust them. I don't personally wear one in here. Timmy does wear his in here. And that's just for the pure fact that his legs have nothing to help support him, you know, against. And if you slam the brakes on, then, you know, he's liable to fly forward or whatever. If you were to start rolling, you would have such a hard time getting out that I think that it would be pretty dangerous. Um, I know some of these do have roll bars and you could fabricate a roll bar for it probably pretty easy. That may be even something that I do to this just for the safety of Tim. It would definitely not hurt to have a good roll bar on it. Other than that, it's really been a lot of fun. Do change your oil right when you get it. Uh, the cheap oil that they put in there is not really that, that great. I used Yama Lube. I went ahead, changed it and put Yama Lube in there and it's been absolutely great. And I hope that gave you guys kind of an insight. And, you know, if you wanted to get one, maybe kind of swayed your, your, your scale either yes or no, because it does have a little, little problems. But I think after you got it, at least for us, after we got it, we worked those problems out. It was no problem. It was, it was awesome. It has been really, really, really cool. And it's really fun to do little upgrades. I know like the little tack, the speedometer, all those things, and they were really fun fairly cheap and pretty straightforward to install. We do also have a couple pod lights that I am gonna put on the front bumper and I'm thinking that we might go ahead and swing by Harbor Freight even, grab uh, the little 2,500 pound winch or whatever. The reason I do say that 
is if you're going up a big hill or something and say you ran out of gas, something happened, whatever, it would kind of, it would not, not be any fun to try to push it up a, up a hill. The battery, probably gonna need to upgrade that to a little bit better of a battery than the one that comes with it. It does seem like it strains a little bit. And we also got a fuse block. That way all of our new accessories that we would put, such as the winch, the pod lights, stuff like that, we are gonna go ahead and add to a fuse block instead of running them straight off the battery. When we do our pod lights, when we do our winch, all that stuff will be off of the fuse block. And I do plan on making a video when I do put those things on, showing you how I put my fuse block on, how I put my winch on, which is just gonna mount to the bumper, it's super straightforward, and how we do the pod lights, also super straightforward, mounting straight to the bumpers. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like the content, please make sure you hit that like, share, and subscribe. So I'm gonna leave you guys with some clips and you guys have a good rest of your day and we will see you on the next one.